Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. Um, I recorded a, a version of this yesterday and unfortunately it was lost. Um, the Camtasia file got too big and it crashed when it was saving it. Uh, but but what we've got going on here is um, I'm doing a, a private lesson today through my Patreon. It's the, the top tier that I offer and um, the artist, I've already reviewed their work and uh, today we're going to start their lesson and what I needed to do for myself personally is um, his work is heavily inspired by um, a lot of the Twitch streaming that Jim has been doing in terms of like pen and ink sketches that he inks himself. Um, that style, uh, he has quite a bit of that in his stuff and uh, to help him move forward with that I actually needed to study myself to um, give him advice because it's not a style that I'm intimately uh, connected to and uh yeah you know i have to do my homework to uh explain things and it, it you look you know the the reality is is i learned from doing this so as much as you see me review books and stuff like that here on the channel again the reason that i do a lot of it is because i i don't really do it <clears throat> on my own uh you know generally uh, i'm working all the time so uh open that book and all that are really based on um me uh it's like the excuses share it um and then look at it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I recorded a, about a 15 or 20 minute video yesterday for Patreon um, of this material. So I'm going to continue with that thought process. So uh, I'm not going to backtrack a lot. And uh, for a dollar, you can get into Patreon, get access to about 90 videos um, that I've done uh, with all kinds of different things that aren't um, on YouTube. Uh, so let's roll. All right. So with this Wolverine piece, um, Oh, this is going to be tricky. I, I had such a good video yesterday. Um, this piece was in the video, and it really, really blew me away. We had been working through a lot of more um, simple pieces and headshots that look like uh, I, Jim had done like 50 maybe sketch cards or something along the lines of that. And I had run through a bunch of those, and then this popped up. And, um, yeah, so uh, the one thing that, that the, the artist that I'm reviewing was having a little bit of trouble with is um, he was he was pretty good at spotting his blacks on his figures, um, but, but there was a really big um, distinction between black and gray um, leading to white. Um, and generally what it was is he wasn't really either smudging enough coming out of the black or rendering enough coming out of the black. And this isn't a super high res scan, so it's a little difficult to see. But but uh, one thing that I will point out is, I mean, he's got a really, really strong light source coming from right here, and it's casting this really beautiful shadow here. Because this arm is going back into space, it's in shadow. As this forearm comes out, the top planes of these muscles and anatomy are being lit. The top of the fingers are being lit these because they're uh, essentially a side plane at this point are, are away from the light and then the top of the blades and and at times Jim will use what I, I call it fictional lighting um, but but this is pretty accurate you will see later in other pieces where he will light things to show it in, in a more uh, cartoony style but uh, yes this is a really really beautiful piece this is nice and because the light source is coming from above he's even able to like disintegrate this line like people will ask me sometimes well wh where do you break up lines like how do you know when to break up lines well wherever the strongest light source is um, as long as you've got form suggesting structure uh, which Jim does here with this um, you're able to remove lines and um, you know suggest form that really isn't there isn't as obvious um, I mean Jim in, a, in a, a way could have even broke up the hair on top I think it was a good call not to um, but uh, we'll see as we go through other pieces but uh, yes, this is a really beautiful piece and the other thing that I had recommended to him is he would put this type of white in his work but he wasn't putting enough um, small detail around it and so a lot of times it was again almost like his uh, the way that he would try to bl blend blacks which is they weren't blending um, there was not a lot of blending going on with the white um, there's looks like there's a little bit of misty splatter here and uh, yeah I mean this this piece is just beautiful um, and the, the guy that I'm reviewing, uh, he was quite good at this uh, technique with the s smudged ink, which uh, I think Jim sometimes uses a tissue. He'll use his hands. He's he's pretty, like, um, primal when it comes to it. I've, I've seen Jim do, well, a lot of people have now because of the Twitch channel, but, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll pretty much go nuts. Um, okay, so, you know, I, I had pointed out... Um, 
consistent things when you're trying to learn like you could you could use this as um how do you break down someone's style how do you extrapolate things that you would maybe like to use um in your own work that you like without directly copying someone but you know if you want to get a little bit of that um flavor of an artist um look for things that they do consistently um and uh is your eye and sort of observation skills uh, develop um you'll be able to to pinpoint that stuff easier. So a couple of things that Jim will do pretty consistently is um, he he generally will have light hit here, here, and here. It's a, it's a pretty standard thing that, that uh, when I did the other video, um, there was a lot of this going on. Regardless of how he lights the face, he, he generally will have light here and probably light here, not always here. Um, and he kind of did it there, but, but, uh, anyway, so this is light sources is coming from, well, he's got a few light sources here, but, uh, um, definitely there's a top light source and it seems to be coming quite bright from the back. And again, um, he didn't, he didn't like with a line draw this in. If you notice the line ends right about here, but his background, it looks like he whited it out. There's a kind of a chunk of white there. Um, so these are top planes and th these are planes underneath so this is a piece of a form uh that's three-dimensional shape and then uh, a shadow underneath it top plane underneath like this is collarbone goes in the here collarbone these nice chunks of uh cape are, are suggested by this um almost kind of like sideways knife Thing. Um, for his lesson, I'm actually going in. I'm going to draw my Cintiq. But but again, this was this is only my review for myself to uh, again kind of like see what exactly Jim is doing. And then when I go back and look at this this guy's work, it becomes real apparent um, what the differences are. Um, this is nice. Top planes are all catching the light, um, and. Uh, a lot of times, like on his Green Lantern pieces, I mean, he'll he'll he he a lot of times will have light hitting here, and and many times these lines aren't even connected underneath. Like he he a lot of times will leave a gap here. But um, Jim's great with the Batman mask. I mean, it's really really incredible, and this is a pretty consistent thing that he does with the ear. It's usually they're blacked out or he'll have shadow. Um, but yeah, if you can memorize some of these shapes, it will definitely um, amp up your stuff. And also the size relationships of Jim's fists to his head. Jim draws pretty big hands. They're not ridiculously big, and he actually draws quite big knees. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the the person I'm reviewing, his hands are a little too small. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll pull these out of the art and, and maybe even like create another layer and show him the size relationship between the fist and the hand because because uh, a lot of times they're very very similar um, you know again that's a gigantic fist for for a face like you know normal hand would would take up you know maybe this much space but this hand would would block out almost all of his features um, oh I never started the stopwatch darn it I got it I'm timing this video so I don't go over and have it crash again um, so light source is coming from here. Um, he's got this this real nice uh, light hitting the top of the muscle here. This is really nice. He keeps the pencil line in. Again, what what the the person I'm reviewing he he'll put these shapes in, um, and then he doesn't really have much blending them. But but if you look, Jim has got a hatch going up going over the muscle. He's got one going across the muscle, and then even his pencil rendering line showing the the form um and and one thing that can kind of help you learn to feel these forms more is is if you can find wireframes like look up anatomy wireframe um and and start thinking of the topography of muscles and that will help you render them because i'll have people go like well i don't know i don't know how to spot blacks i don't know how to render things it's, it's all form i mean you're lighting form you're rendering over form so if you if you if you only think of this as line work and you you are aware that it's anatomy but you're not really thinking of it as is three-dimensional form i mean you're going to have trouble lighting it i mean it's the bottom line once you know the simple anatomy you don't need to know every muscle but you know you should try to come up with your version of it um 
and uh, realize that it's form. You know, this could just as easily be a circle with blocks. And when you think of it like that, it's actually much easier to light. But again, it's a combination of the two. It's it's knowing anatomy and then it's knowing form. You know, if you can't light a box and a sphere sitting next to each other, how are you ever going to be able to light this? It's it's you're not. Um, this is a great piece. This is a beautiful, beautiful Batman piece. Um, and the Joker is nice too, but this Batman is really, really excellent. Um, and again, he's got this plane here because it, it goes out. This is a form that sticks out. It's catching light. The light drips into here. It's hitting here. It's hitting here. And he's got another kind of like, it's an ambient light source right here. It doesn't seem to be affecting too much of the, I mean, it's, it's, it is lighting this a little bit, but, but, um, Oh, you know what? Okay, so we'll we'll say that he's got like a, a a spotlight like right about here. So it's it's hitting all of this, catching this. It's falling falling over this concave area, and then this form he's showing is is coming forward. So this is facing forward. This is probably going back. This is facing forward a little more. Forward plane, forward plane, forward plane. He's got a little tiny bit of rim lighting going on right here. So, like, because it's a collage, um, I mean, you could imagine if something was sitting behind Batman's head and the light's hitting it, it's going to bounce off of that and light this. And you could argue that there might have been, like, a little bit of a, a rim light there. Not necessary, though, because he did black all this out. So he's not catching a lot of reflective light. And um, this could, again, be what I call stylized lighting, like this little thing right here. Um, this is cool, really, really solid planes. Even though some of this is is um, abstract, this is great. This is awesome, and and these two are almost identical to. Look, he's got two, 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 that one he didn't show it as much, but yeah. So there's your. consistencies you know i mean that's anatomy but but it's it's look you could have three there but if you consistently do three and it it fits into this thing it's okay i mean you know this is cartooning um nice blacks here is really great this is awesome um there's a consistent thing that he does here but we'll, we'll see if i spot it and more things and again he's great with the mask like like this area right here is just so well done every time i mean um it's really really insane and this is nice it's more more linear um i won't really get into this too much right now um and uh solid blacks where he's showing form he's real accurate with the placement of these i don't i'm hoping that there's some but but uh even when he's more um loose with with the application of it uh, the anatomy gets a little a little uh, vague right here it's like it gets a little flat here with the cape going over it but um he still is indicating form um but uh let me see okay this one i'm not gonna go over this one right now i mean he's got there's a top light coming here and it's catching his face here it's, just, it's still cool but I, it, it's a, it would be a little hard to go over that one all right so this um oh yeah 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 all right some of these i did yesterday so it's like uh Oh, and I talked about this Pentel pen. So these these Pentel pens that he uses, they're blue like shaker pens um, with a like a ball bearing inside, and uh, this this white ink is really really. Um, uh, it's not only thick, but it's it's you don't want to get it on a brush. I kind of warn people about it. Is is this stuff? If it gets on a brush, will destroy a brush. Um, but the nice thing is, is you can lay it down quite thick and. Um, draw over it to some extent i don't know if a hunt 102 because it is like almost chalky paint or chalky glue um type substance i don't know if you could run a croquel through it but you could definitely run uh softer markers and stuff over it you can see he kind of did it here a little bit um but uh let me go back to this so again he's oh, let's see where the light yeah so the light's coming from behind but but he, he generally will have batman's ear casting some kind of like gnarly shadow or, or it'll be like line work and again he's got light here light here light here light here you know those are top planes that, that catch light in a lot of jim's drawings he's got the shadow here the shadow here shadow here master muscle is usually got 
bounce light and then he'll have his neck anatomy you know the tendons and all that uh, let's see this is nice in here and these are usually like kind of stretched out as shapes you'll you'll notice a lot of like it's going into a crease it's coming around the crease and then it comes out goes into the crease goes around the crease and comes out and they're I call them soft S's um, I had told him about his buildings this was I remember why I put this in here so the the one thing that amateur and more beginning artists will do is a lot of times that they they set up their buildings flat and I want to point something out and it's nice because he establishes this here but this is gonna help you see this here so Jim's got a vanishing point going down here and all of these this is basically three-point perspective but but I'm not gonna freak you out on that right now because these are going straight up and down uh, overall like I mean he's still kind of following the the vanishing point up here you could argue that maybe it would start to pull in this way a little bit I'd have to find it but but what I want to point out is these are all still in perspective with these I'm gonna show you how okay so think of this shape right here okay and it's going here what he's done here is these are these are now they're still going to the vanishing point these aren't side views of the buildings this is this plane right here is this plane right here sorry let me get my the mouse slipped out of my hand that's the side of the building that's facing us side of the building that's facing us this right here is going into space it's real subtle but he's doing that side of the building this is going into space he he loses the vanishing point a little bit there he's probably trucking though um and then these buildings start to turn this is still kind of doing this this one and then these are starting to straighten out a little bit but then up here if you look this is going to a vanishing point down here this is going to a vanishing point here these aren't side views where like um you know you would put like a flat rectangle and then just have like lines going across it's a real subtle thing but it's actually a really powerful tool that he's using here these buildings are turned so this is a front plane this is a side plane these are going to a vanishing point this way vanishing point this way vanishing point that way um, vanishing point this way this is beautiful it's so nice it's really nice to down but anyway it's a subtle thing but it's it's just um, it, it's something that he needed to really kind of pay attention to and uh, you know these look like ruled lines and then a lot of this stuff doesn't um, this is all freehand Jim's great I mean this is so good this is a nice piece um, so real bright light hitting Batman across here because this arm is sticking out it's catching a lot of light it's in front of his body it's just getting nailed by light and then these side planes are catching shadow um, it's like light coming from behind him, so he's got that nice. Um, I don't know if we would necessarily call it a core shadow. It doesn't go heavily down the middle of his full face. If you look here, this is a top plane under your uh, mouth. Um, so uh, if you think about the planes, you've got your lips, top plane, down plane, that little shadow right there. Do you see the dark part on the lip? Then this is a top plane, and then a down plane. Um, you could look at the Asaro head to kind of see the plane to the face might help you. Um, but again, form, form. This is the a lower plane. This is lit. This is con concave, so it goes into a shadow. Connector, concave, form, form, form. That's three chunks of anatomy. Chunk one that, that splits. It's, you know, this muscle or uh, bone, you know, going to the elbow. If you know the anatomy, it goes like this. They, they cro crisscross. Um, and uh, a nice top plane there. And then it's going in the shadows. Really, really nice. Great piece. It's a killer Batman. Nice cape, too. Okay. So on this one, instead of doing shadow, he does rendering, but it's still the same idea. That upper lip, the mask of the mouth, is catching light, and then this is a top plane, but he creates the indents, and he's got the bright light 
the reflective light hitting the master muscle as these shadows um, open here. I'd mentioned that before. Like he'll he'll let like even if you look at like Green Lantern like mask drawings he does, usually he'll have light hitting the middle here. Um, and so what you would basically think is this is the plane that's sticking out the furthest. This is going back into space, going back into shadow. This is going in towards the eye socket. So if this is a curved piece that goes around into shadow, this is in shadow. This is catching light. This is a side plane. This is a front plane. That's a side plane. So again, three-dimensional shape. Side, front, in. Front, side. You know, this is wrapping around top plane. This is nice. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, she's being all kinds of lit. Man, so kick ass. Uh, materials. We could talk about materials a little bit. So, look at the way that he renders the metal here um, compared to what he did here. So, this to me almost looks like it could be banded metal of some sort. Like it's definitely got like um, sort of a scratchy texture to it, meaning that it was probably more more roughly crafted. Where this this has a more smooth uh, feel to it, and and he he has these like strokes of four. I'm not 100 percent sure. You know, I think because he wasn't really going for a ton of black on on the figure. If you notice that the only place that he really goes jet black is here that's definitely intentional he's he's trying to really have this pop and then obviously everything behind it pop but but do you see how the blacks disintegrate and go into line work that's a real clever trick and and uh is this stuff is going up into shadow and then this because the light's coming from here that's away from the light that's away from the light. Well, the, the light actually must be coming from, it, it's, it's basically coming from sort of behind underneath her, and it's it's there's so much reflective light bouncing off everything that it's creating those core, like the core shadow and then the lighting all around it, um, and this is pretty cool, pretty cool. And then top plane, um, uh, top planes. See, top plane, top plane. That's all the way above the body and then up in these basically like something that's further back and, and farther away from the light you know it's really really nicely done and, and uh, man he's great with her her lasso that's such a pain in the butt to draw uh, but he did a real nice job really really nice this is great man so masterfully done that's so tricky to do and I'm assuming that he used his little white pen tell buddy but man those are great, great arcing lines. It's really, really good. Okay, interesting. I didn't do this one yesterday. And then I'm going to stop it after this. So I'm assuming this is Superman and Batman fighting. Yeah. All right, let me go back real quick. We're going to focus on Superman mostly. Um, so put like a nice shadow here. So there's a lot of light coming from a... From Oh, I guess it's it's coming from behind Batman, but Batman is sort of casting a shadow on him. His body is casting a shadow on him. Um, that's Batman's fist. And that's his... So this is his right arm. This is Batman's right arm. And this is his left arm. So Batman's in front of him, and his arm goes down, and then is coming up. So if it went... And Superman's behind him, so... Uh, and then this is coming from, from up and above. And this is his yeah, right hand, left hand. The ear, um, and and uh, so the lighting that he does on the hair. Top plane. This is going into the crevice, and then he he lights it here. So, you know, this is interesting. So. The light is coming from here. It's hitting the top of this. Go. It, I guess it 
goes into sort of like the part. I mean, I see what it does. What I'm saying is I'm trying to understand if this is quote unquote fictional lighting or if this is legit. Um, this is the top plane, but I mean, I'm trying to think where his light source is. This is kind of more stylistic. It still looks quite nice. I mean, so this is this is the 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 thought thought process behind it is is shadow here because this is all lower lower material. And then again, this is a top plane. And then to separate the shadow going in here because if you went completely dark, like if this was the darkest thing, you wouldn't really be de delineating this new form that's starting here. And then this is kind of like a like a core highlight, and then a core highlight and and um. You could see a little, he plays with it a little bit in here. There's like little brighter gaps, but um, you know, it's just basically going dark light, dark light, dark light. But but where's your darker light? Where are your darker places going to be? They're going to be on the sideburns, and then you can have it kind of come in here. But but uh, he's pretty consistent with that, well, and it looks beautiful, man. The finished piece is great. So all right, I'm going to end it there because I don't want this file to crash again. But again, this is just me sort of uh, soaking myself into this world, and I had already done um, a 40 minute video yesterday and a 15 minute video, so I've spent quite a bit of time on this and. Uh, it's tricky sometimes to go back and like capture the magic the the video that i lost was really really good it's a shame but um all right hopefully that that at least helps you kind of break down someone's stuff and and things to think about um you know he needed to work on his finishes his drawings are pretty pretty decent right now but 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 uh it's like you kind of have to come at it as a combination of things so the drawing stuff wasn't so much what I was going to get from Jim. I would go more to the source for for anatomy and stuff like that, and then and then he can plug that back into his style, stylistic version of it. Um, so uh, yeah, because because it, it can be risky to learn directly from an artist. You're you're better off learning kind of like the real stuff or 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 from art artistic anatomy books. Um, then looking at what your favorite artist does, and then kind of coming up with your own conclusions based on the two pieces of information. Um, than then, uh, only learning it from your favorite comic book artist. So, all right, I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.